Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the place where we not only talk about what's going on in the gun world, but also how we're going to fix it together. And the content that we're going to hit tonight is the breaking news that the Illinois assault weapon ban is back on momentarily. This is all part of the process, and we're going to break it down right now. Everything is linked in the description box below, and I cannot wait to hear what you guys think on this one because we are on the primrose path directly to the SCOTUS, and we're going to walk through that right now. And if you are new or you're a returning viewer, please consider hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel, and turning the notification bell on. We need as many of you as possible to get into the fold with us to help pass the blessing of the Second Amendment along to the next generation. And thank you so much in advance for your consideration. All right, my brothers and sisters, Illinois seems to be the hot topic, at least in the last week or so, because now a federal court, as I mentioned in the introduction, has reinstated the Illinois assault weapons ban, or put a stay on the existing halt. This it's very confusing of what's going on because at the same time, there's a bunch of different things going on with Amy Coney Barrett already getting involved with another case. This is a thing I'm going to try to break down as best I can. Let me know if I land this plane. Let's get into this because this is the stuff right here. Check this out. Federal appellate court puts hold on ruling that blocked enforcement of the Illinois gun ban. Now, this came out May 4th, 6.59 p.m. This is really like an hour to an hour and a half old. And this is really big news. The reason this is so important is because not only is it reinstating something that was ruled unconstitutional, but it's working its way up the path until it gets to the SCOTUS. Comey, Amy Coney Barrett has already been involved already from a decision out of the Illinois ban, the, or the Illinois gun control and pushes. Now we're going to continue to see it. Amy Coney Barrett got involved in something from a year ago in Naperville. This is the assault weapons ban that was just passed by J.B. Pritzker. This is massive to understand because as that pyramid gets smaller, guess who's at the top, baby? Exactly where we've been talking about for a while. But let me show you what actually occurred to make this happen. And I'm going to show you some of the most obnoxious, idiotic reasoning that you've ever heard around an actual or a court case. Springfield. A federal appeals court in Chicago on Thursday put a hold on a ruling by a lower court judge that blocked the enforcement of the state's ban on many higher-powered firearms and large-capacity ammunition magazines. The U.S. Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals decision stops last week's ruling by U.S. District Judge Stephen McGlynn from being in effect until further notice. Appellate Court Judge Frank Easterbrook, though, allowed lawyers in the case to file more briefs in response to the decision. So, at the end of the day... The original halt is now stayed, or the original stay is now halted. Basically, it's back on. That's what this is saying. The next step is getting pretty high up there, a SCOTUS time. All right? Now, this is what I'm saying, and this is kind of, they even put it in the article. The Seventh Circuit Appellate Court upheld Kendall's ruling, which is the original person who said, the original judge who said, this is perfectly fine. It's completely constitutional. And the gun shop owner has appealed the decision to the Supreme Court. Like I mentioned, that's the next step. But listen to what they actually argued, and you tell me if they didn't just make a fatal mistake in the way that they argued this. Heller, remember that word. In its motion to delay the implementation of McGlynn's ruling, Raul's office argued that the judge, quote, failed to decide whether assault weapons are bearable arms commonly used for self-defense. Oh, open this door. Your argument is now that but are ARs really acceptable for common defense? Are they just too much? They're not really common use, are they? The Heller decision literally says common use. Not to mention a stun gun case out of Massachusetts confirming that 2,000 stun guns makes them common use. Not to mention that these are the most popular rifles in the United States, which make them common use. This argument is idiotic, and I cannot wait for this to continue. Let me read you some more. Raul's office also argued that McGlynn's ruling failed to meet the burden in Bruin that the banned weapons were covered by the plain text of the Second Amendment protecting the rights of the plaintiffs to carry firearms for self-defense. Really? Raul's office argued that many of the banned weapons, such as AR-15 models, have similar capabilities as military-issued firearms and are, therefore, unnecessary for self-defense in a regular civilian setting. Really? So... I want to know what are the features that AR-15s have that are similar to military style weapons? Is it a trigger? Because I'm pretty sure everything has a trigger. Is it a magazine capacity? Because I'm pretty sure everything has a magazine, with the exception of revolvers, of course. Um, or shotguns. Whatever. You know what I'm saying. But the entire point here is this argument is so weak, I can see through it from here, and I'm sitting in Georgia. Anyway, 
I continue, but apparently it's unnecessary for civilian defense. Let me continue. It gets dumber. This is a quote. The massive amount of energy imparted by AR-15 rounds is far more than needed and counterproductive for self-defense, Raul's motion states. Counterproductive for self-defense. You just said in the first part of that sentence that it's far more energy than needed, so it's too effective. And then you follow it up with, because it's too effective, it's ineffective. This hurts. Let's continue. Quote, in fact, assault weapons are inherently dangerous in a home defense scenario because they pose substantial risk to individuals in adjoining rooms, neighboring apartments, or other attached dwelling units. So now it's penetration is the issue. I thought it was just energy dump was the issue. If this is really where they're arguing, this is going to end exceedingly poorly for them. They may have won this in the short term, but now they are one of 10 states who are creating in injury across the United States, appointing to SCOTUS. This is not going to take long until a case is chosen up by them. I'm just, that's just my prediction. All right. So let's just read this last piece because, you know, why not? Raul's office also argued that the magazines are accessories and not arms that fall within the scope of the Second Amendment. So they're old. It's not a gun. It just it's a, feeds a gun. So therefore, it's not a gun argument. Okay, that one. Let's leave that one to the side. That one's kind of dumb, but we've known about that one. But the new argument is there's just too much energy transfer. There's over penetration of rounds, which is really, really bad. And at the exact same time, it's not efficient and effective. And it's really counterproductive for civilian use. All the while saying it's not a common use item. You cannot make this stuff up. Everything is linked in the description box below. As I mentioned, this is like an hour and a half old. Let me know what you guys think. I hope I landed this plane, and I will see you on the next one. I'm Brayden. See you later.